Dr. Brian Abizzolo wants to help you lead your own fitness revolution in 2018. Do you have 30 minutes a day for one month? And are you willing to incorporate three simple yet natural ingredients into your everyday diet? Well, if so, then the doctor may have a solution which will work for you. The chiropractor and former reality TV star stopped by the Two Man Advantage podcast to dish on the Dr. Abs lifestyle, his time courting Rachel Lindsay on The Bachelorette, and so much more. So first of all, Brian, we want to take the time and welcome you to the Two Man Advantage podcast, and we're excited to talk about this most exciting new fitness uh, routine there, buddy, and we, we want to welcome you to the show this afternoon. Thank you, thank you, Kevin. I appreciate uh, you taking the time to talk to me, and I'm uh, happy to be here. Can you begin by telling me about the lifestyle itself? I know it's centered around alternative forms of natural healing, fitness, and natural supplementation, while also allowing you to detox your body. Yeah, basically the lifestyle is focused around natural health. So at, at my core, I'm a doctor of chiropractic, so you know I heal the body without the use of drugs or surgery. And you know, pretty much I advocate for all types of natural healing. You know, not just chiropractic, but you know, massage, yoga, um, you know, other other forms of, of things that don't encompass you having to use drugs or having to go under the knife. Uh, so that's the forms of natural healing. And then also, you know, the importance of fitness. Um, you know, I've worked out, I think I started to work out when I was a senior in high school, and I'm just trying to maintain a, a fit lifestyle since then. Um, it's obviously very important for heart health for people out there to you know, at least get 30 minutes of cardiovascular in a day. Uh, you know, one in four people in this country actually die from heart disease. So, you know, I think exercise goes a long way in just keeping you healthy. And, you know, the third aspect of the lifestyle is, you know, diet and supplementation. And, and you know, that's a healthy diet, obviously, but also supplementation that's more natural. You know, I know a lot of uh, supplementation nowadays has, a lot of additives and chemicals and, you know, things we can't even pronounce. And, you know, I, you know, and I, I'm guilty of that. You know, I used to take those types of supplements back in the day just to stay, stay in shape and whatnot. But, you know, as I've gotten older, you know, I realized that, you know, hey, maybe these things that they put in these supplements aren't that good for your body and they may cause, you know, unwanted effects down the line. So, you know, I've transitioned to a more natural supplementation. And, you know, when you combine all three of those, aspects uh, together, it creates that lifestyle where, you know, I want to help people feel good and look good in a natural way. And can you tell me about the ingredients associated with the lifestyle, and how they help you sort of perform at your peak or to make you feel as good as you uh, want to after you are involved in the program? Yeah, I mean, the program, it, it, it's it, it, there's a challenge associated with it. It's uh, the 3033. Um, the products involved in the challenge are, first off, the IOSO tea. Uh, the IOSO tea is an all-natural organic tea that's made up of nine organic herbs. Uh, it's a long list, but I believe it's uh, holy thistle, persimmon leaves, uh, papaya, blessed thistle, malva leaves, uh, marshmallow, myrrh, and chamomile and ginger. So basically this concoction of those herbs is meant to detoxify your body. Um, you know, it's going to you know, help you out with any constipation issues and basically help overall digestion. Uh, and it's going to give you sustained weight loss with continued use. So, you know, it, it's something that's going to eliminate all the bad from your body. You know, obviously there's a lot of toxins out there and a lot of people live with uh, parasites in their body that they actually don't know about, you know, and it's really good to detoxify your system. You know, we get parasites and toxins from, you know, the food we eat, the water we drink, the, the air we breathe, and, you know, we may not know that. A lot of people may not know that. So it, it's really good to uh, use supplements that will detoxify your body of those substances. And, you know, and then the second phase is what we call Nutriburst, and that's a uh, basically... Uh, a, a vitamin mineral supplement you know it's fully loaded with a lot of things that we need on a daily basis it has uh, 72 minerals uh, 
10 vitamins, uh, 22 phytonutrients uh, from fruits and veggies, 18 amino acids, 13 whole foods, and 12 different types of herbs in it as well. So, and you get that all, you know, with just a tablespoon a day. So, in essence, the theory is you detox the body, you get rid of all the bad stuff that's in, you know, your, uh, stuck to your colon and all that intestinal sludge that we've accumulated over the years. And then we're going to refill the body with all the good stuff that we need on a daily basis. So just with those two alone, you know, you're going to feel a difference. And you're going to feel energized. And you're just going to have a, a really good sense of, of mental clarity and your memory is going to improve. So just because you got all those toxins out of your system. And then last but not least is the NRG, which is a uh, basically an energy supplement. It's an all-natural energy supplement I know. You know, a lot of people out there use those pre-workouts that, you know, again, like I said, have, you know, chemicals and things that, you know, they may not even know are going into their body. And, of course, they, they work, you know, because I've tried them before myself. But, you know, I was always looking for an alternative uh, as the years went by. And, you know, this is one that I love and I use every time I work out. Uh, but basically it helps uh, suppress your appetite. It gives you energy. It, uh, it's a mood enhancer. It helps you focus a lot better. Uh, and it burns fat. So, you know, I, I, I take a couple before I work out, you know, it energizes me, you know, it doesn't give me the jitters or the crash that other uh, supplements may do. And, um, and those, those three are pretty much the, the, the core of, of the uh, supplementation. I mean, there's a lot more that I use, but, you know, as far as instant gratification for the people out there to use, I mean, they're going to notice a difference right away when they use these three products. And tell me, how has your uh, newfound sort of celebrity helped you pr promote uh, the lifestyle faster? I guess. Yeah, I mean, I've always, I've, I've always promoted health, just for the simple fact that I am a chiropractor, and you know, I, I practice what I preach. You know, I, I treated thousands and thousands of patients over over ten years, and I've always, you know, not only tried to promote the profession of chiropractic, but also eating healthy and supplementation and whatnot. So well, this, you know, new platform I have is basically just that. It's, it's a larger platform where I can reach a lot more people. And, you know, what, I, what I'm trying to do is just share the gift of health. You know, this is uh, these are supplements that, you know, I, I don't get paid to endorse or, you know, the company isn't paying me. I mean, yeah, I, I do get paid to when I, when I sell the product, but not – to endorse like other people out there do, you know, for certain products that, you know, they may not even be taking, but they just endorse them. That's not me. You know, I want to endorse something that I believe in. There's no uh, monetary uh, incentive with that. Uh, it's something that it works for me, and I've seen it work for uh, a lot of other people, and I just want to spread the word about it, and I just want to uh, share the gift of health and help people feel good and look good. Now, uh, transitioning to live after the Battle of Red, can you tell me how has uh, life sort of changed for you and radio since the camera stopped rolling? Uh, so our lives have changed a lot since the show. Obviously, it's a lot different being on camera and off camera. You know, obviously, when you're on camera, uh, you know, you may be a little bit skeptical as far as you know, is this person really like this or are they putting on a front for the camera? But as you know, with Rachel, you know, she's very forthcoming and, you know, what you see is what you get. And she's a very strong personality. And, you know, I was as real as I could be on the show as well. So it's a, it's a situation where it was a pleasant transition where, you know, the woman I met on the show is exactly the same woman that's off the show. And, you know, our relationship is obviously blossom since then you know we've gotten to learn uh, a lot about each other and, and you know we've noticed that we just have a lot of things in common you know and that bond has just grown and you know everything from you know the love of sports you know i know you're a big sports fan yourself uh the love of music our, our sense of humor are in tune with each other and we're just a really good balance for each other and um you know right now we're just living in dallas we actually uh, just got a place together in Dallas and, you know, we're focusing on our careers. You know, she's really into uh, uh, her platform is uh, uh, motivating and, and uplifting women out there. And, uh, you know, obviously she's an attorney, so she's focusing her on her law career as well. And, uh, 
you know, she wants to dip her toes into the sports and entertainment industry. So, you know, she's got a lot going on. I got a lot going on. You know, we, even though we have different paths, you know, we, we support each other in all our goals and, you know, we, we, you know, we just love spending time together. So, you know, that's pretty much where we're at right now. And tell me, what would be uh, three things that our viewers may be surprised to learn about you that they didn't see on the show? Uh, three things. Um, well, like I said, I mean, we we are best friends. Uh, you know, like I said, our 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 bond has grown ever since the show, and just the the things we have in common, you know, have actually surprised us. You know, we both have a love for music, particularly. It's kind of funny. Uh, '90s R&B and hip hop. You know, we'll put that on, you know, Pandora or radio station, and you know, we'll start rapping the words. She's actually surprised sometimes when I know the lyrics. Uh, but you know, also our love for sports. Uh, you, we we debate all the time. We we put on first take in the morning. You know, that's one of our favorite shows, and we just listen to the topics that are discussed on the show, and we actually debate them or debate them ourselves. Uh, you know, and she, you know, she has her strong opinions. I have my strong opinions, and you know, sometimes I'll I'll play devil's advocate just to get a little rise out of her. But at the same time, it. It keeps up our conversation skills, and, you know, I know she loves that because it's going to help her in her sports uh, entertainment career. You know, she's obviously going to, you know, go up there and, and be challenged, you know, being a woman in that industry, but, you know, she's ready for the challenge, and I think, you know, just that little practice that we have at home is definitely going to help her out. So, you know, that's just all about supporting each other and helping each other out, and, you know, she's always uh, uh, helping me out with my – uh, you know, my goals and whatnot. Um, and another thing, uh, as far as relationship, um, I'll be real. I mean, you know, every, every relationship has its ups and downs. You know, I'm not going to take her and say everything's always peace. You know, we do have disagreements, but, you know, one of the great things about us is, is our maturity level. Um, you know, one of us is, you know, let's say we do have a disagreement. We always, are able to look at ourselves in the mirror and realize if somebody is maybe wrong on one end and, you know, maybe you think you have a point, but we always come back together and we talk about it and we discuss it. And, you know, she's apologized to me before. I've apologized to her before. You know, it's a situation where, you know, if we do have a disagreement, it doesn't last long. And I think that's a testament to the maturity of the relationship. You know, it's not a situation where, you know, we'll, be mad or, or not talk to each other for hours, you know, we, we, we hate that, you know, we, we always want to be together, be affectionate with each other, so if there's a disagreement, you know, we, we're able to be rational adults about it and come together and say, you know, hey, look, babe, I'm sorry about this, you know, this is where I was coming from, I just want you to understand, rather than it having it be a, you know, a full-on blow-up, you know, like other relationships uh, uh, do, so, you know, I just think that that's a, a testament to the strength of our relationship and, you, you know, everything we've gone through. Um, and it limits, you know, the disagreements and it's, and it's a majority love. So, you know, I'm just really happy and, you know, we're, we're in love and I like, I don't know if you know, but, you know, we're looking to get married this year. And um, I know, heard I, that rumor, uh, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> this is a microcosm for, you know, if this is a microcosm for what, you know, marriage is going to be like, then, you know, that's, that's awesome because, you know, we're, we're able to get, uh, through the bump and, you know, just maintain a positivity about our relationship that, uh, that's really great. So, you know, I, I'm really happy. How's her Spanish? My Spanish is good. No, her hers, Spanish. Hers, hers needs a little work. <laughs> hers definitely needs a little work. Well, how's the professor? How, how are your teaching abilities there, buddy? Uh, my teaching abilities are, are pretty good. She'll probably tell you that I, I, I haven't been doing as good of a job lately. I don't know if you saw that either. When you saw on the show, I gave her a Spanish dictionary. I did see that. That, thing, yeah. that. that thing's collecting dust. I don't even know where. It's probably in a box somewhere. So she hasn't used it. But, you know, I'll, I'll put a little blame on myself. I haven't been doing a, a, the best job. You know, I'll say a couple things here and there in Spanish. But, um, you know, it's funny. We actually started watching on Netflix Narcos. Uh, which has subtitles in Spanish. So I was like trying to kill two birds with one stone, maybe watch a couple of show and at the same time help her help her learn Spanish. But uh but yeah, we always we always fall asleep like a, an episode in. So um but yeah, you know, it's it's a situation
situation where I definitely want her to learn Spanish. You know, obviously I'm Colombian and I want to take her to Colombia. Our, our wedding could possibly be in Colombia. So it's a situation where I definitely want her to get along with my family and be able to communicate. So, you know, we're, de- we're definitely going to pick that up and, and pick up the, the learning. The, her thing is, is she likes to understand what I say, but she never talks back. And I'm like, hey, you know, you got to, you have to not only understand what I'm saying, but you actually got to practice talking. So, you know, that, that's what she's got to work on. And then I, at the same time, have to uh, pick it up in terms of, of teaching more on, uh, on a more regular basis. Now, in terms of fitness, just going back to that for a second, what are uh, three best fitness tips that you could give our viewers to sort of uh, stay in shape? Uh, fitness advice. Um, yeah, I mean, for the average person, you know, I would say, number one is just stay determined and consistent. Uh, I think just having a positive attitude and, and pretty much showing up is, is half the battle a lot of the times. You know, a lot of people, you know, make excuses for why they don't go to the gym and whatnot, but I think if they just you know, uh, uh, make a decision in their life, look in the mirror and say, hey, you know what, I got to change, I got to do something and just stick to that and, and uh, you know, just show up at the gym and work, you know, I mean, some days you're going to have it, some days you're going to, you're not have it, you're going to be tired, you may not want to be there, but I think showing up is half the battle. Um, also, I think, uh, you know, if you're just starting to get into fitness, uh, always warm up, you know, that's very important, you know, you can't, reach your goals if you're injured so you know i'll always suggest doing a, a good five minute uh warm-up uh, of activity before any workout you know not so much stretching per se but you know more of a, an active workout such as you know a couple squats you know do some lunges some push-ups some knee raises you know whatever you need to do shoulder circles and you know just to get that heart rate up you know, fire up the nervous system and get your body actually ready for the exercise that you're going to be doing. Um, uh, as far as the third, I would say listen to music. I think listening to music, you know, I, it's night and day. I, I actually was without a, a, a earbuds and an iPod for a couple of months. And, you know, my workouts actually suffered. You know, I wasn't as motivated. You know, I was in the gym looking around, looking on my phone, you know, in between sets and, I just think music, you know, find a playlist that you love and get you pumped up, um, you know, because I know, I know the, uh, that music can be the difference between getting a few reps in at the end of, the, of your set. So, you know, I think music is very important, uh, whatever that may be. Whatever anybody feels will pump them up, that's what they should listen to during the gym. And, you know, just another one, I would say just try to find a workout partner, you know, because uh, what I've noticed is that, you know, if you have somebody there with you to – hold you accountable that you know you're you're expected to show up and work hard and you know they're putting you to the challenge and you know you see them working hard that's going to motivate you and and you know want to keep up with them and you know it's going to just help you become the best version of yourself you know you're going to just push each other to work harder so uh you know those would be the 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 couple things that i could think about you know that come to mind when you know starting a workout program and and just, just in case you're you're just starting to get into it you just mentioned it. You often talk about being the best version of yourself. So can you, uh, my last question for you is, can you tell me where that sort of derived from and why it's so important for you to live your life through that motto? Yeah, I mean, being the best version of yourself, I, I mean, in every aspect of life, I think is is the way to go. You know, it's the way, is the, the mindset that you should have. Um, you know, we as he, you know, we, we as, as humans are, are basically only given one life. So I believe that, you know, we should spend that time on this earth doing exactly what makes us happy and just living out our passions. And, you know, I know people sometimes tend to compare themselves uh, to others and, and focus on what, you know, uh, they don't have as opposed to what they do have. You know, I think living a life of gratitude is very important. Um, and I think that we should just try to our best to, to challenge and, and improve the person we see in front of the mirror every single morning. Um, you know, I always call it the, the you versus you mentality. You know, strive to be a better version of yourself uh, more so than you were the day before. You know, everyone has uh, their particular journey. And, you know, you can't look at somebody and see, oh, my God, look how 
you know, let's say a, a fitness example, look how much bigger or more cut or more better looking they are. You know, they're like, you know, you can't compare yourself to them because you don't know their journey. You know, they, you don't know the, the blood, sweat and tears that they've gone through, you know, to get to that point. You know, if you're just starting and you compare yourself to them, you're going to get disillusioned because it's going to take a lot of work to get to that point where they're at. So what I think is good is for, is for everybody to just set small goals and just focus on improving themselves. Like, don't worry about what that other person is doing. Focus on yourself. You know, uh, just look to make improvements. Set small goals. Like, don't look at the, the big picture right away. You know, set big picture goals, but then also set small goals and, you know, uh, achieve those smaller goals. And before you know it, you'll get to that big goal at the end. And I just think that sometimes, you know, you know, people get discouraged because they don't see improvements. I think if they just continue to work and, you know, and whatever they may be doing, it, it, whether it be at their their job and fitness um, and, and just in life in general, um, you know, in love and relationships, I think, uh, you know, if, if somebody just goes with that motto of, of being the best version of themselves in every aspect of their life, I think they, uh, you know, they'll be successful in the end. Hey, Brian, we want to take a few minutes to th- thank you for appearing on the Two Man Advantage podcast, buddy. We enjoyed your contribution and your time on the show today, Bon. Thank you so much, Kevin. I had a great time. And uh, again, man, you're an inspiration to me and so many others. And I just appreciate you for having me on.